Do you want to start, Sips? You never start. What do you mean? I start all the time. I'm like the, the main starter. You're not. Yeah, <laughs> I am. All right, fine. We'll prove it. <laughs> That's not true. Well, I got to start it again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's here we Hi. are again. I, yeah, you're probably so <laughs> bored of hearing me opening the podcast every week because I, it, it's almost like there's like only one person here and not three. Two other people who never want to start off the podcast. It's always me. Anyway, what's up? How's it going, guys? <laughs> I'm good. I've got a breakfast banana. Oh, I'm feeling. <laughs> what's I'm feeling the difference beans. between a Breakfast banana and a regular banana. It's got an egg on it. Oh. It's, got, it's, it's got an egg fried <laughs> onto it. Wrapped in bacon, baby. Yeah, it's just wrapped up in eggs. This sounds actually tempting. It sounds you disgusting. Mean? Yeah, it does sound oh, disgusting. No. no, no, no. These combo meals, you know, you have to you have to combine stuff. People with their stupid food, they just unnecessarily put cheese or... I watch, I, I, there's this trend, I don't know whether it's a joke or not, but... It's people cooking things in ludicrous amounts of butter. Yeah, I saw I saw that. You have you been uh, reading slash r slash stupid food as well? <laughs> I have. Yeah, I me have. too. It is really I dumb, am. isn't it? There's another even dumb. more recent trend called girl dinner. Girl which dinner, which is yeah, it's basically like um, I assume I don't know why it's called girl dinner, but it is. It, it well, the, the 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 woman who came up with the meme called it that, and she basically just has like a really shitty charcuterie board. So she has like some grapes, some carrot sticks, a bit of ham, and like a pickle. Right. And it's just she's just kind of making fun of you know when you see those really nice boards laid out with all the olives and the tapenade and everything just yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So th she's just got like a really shitty version of that. Right, um, and I don't know why it's called girl dinner. So yeah, go ahead and that—that's the meme. I don't know why. Is it? Is it? Uh, is it just a plate of chips and stuff? Is that? The... No, it's it's like Does lots it look, of little uh, things. It like lots of little things where it looks sparse and just kind of shit. Yeah, I, th I think it's yeah. like a meme about how you know you're not looking after yourself or something. I don't know. Right, right. <clears throat> but it's certainly it's not like a full meal. You just grabbed some odds and sods lying around and uh, put and them on a board and tried to yeah. yeah. I mean, right. everybody does that sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah hell yeah. yeah. I mean, at the moment, it's just me and uh, and and young Babby Flax, the younger uh, Mrs. F, and and the eldest have gone away for a bit, so we are just it's just us. Yeah. Um. So we're, it's very chill. Um. We we not well, done. It sounds a like there's amount. a dog in the background. There's next oh. door's dog. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's like interesting. It's just all right. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I couldn't identify it. It's quite quiet. I couldn't yeah. identify what it was. That's originally. not Aggie. I, I recognize Aggie's bark. Her uh, her bark is different. Most dogs are like a like that. Woof, woof, woof. Aggie's bark is <laughs> like that. She sort of runs out of she be, she's really like a good wrestler. She's got like a really <laughs> unique a, a really a really unique uh like chant if she you She like. has. But when, it's when, like a when slightly she barks, frightened her, woo! Yeah, woo! Her feet come up off the ground a little bit because she has to put so much oomph into it. Uh, but she's not right. not a natural barker. It's quite funny. Um, it's like a frightened grandma. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Flax, yeah. um, I know this this is a subject dear to your heart, and uh, I don't know uh, an awful lot about it, but I did hear that there was like a congressional hearing about uh, like that UFO whistleblower oh God, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Were you absolutely spraying shit into your pants, like no, no, nonstop so I, or what? I, 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 I feel like you've misconstrued uh, my point about aliens if you think that I was excited about this. My point oh. is, there are no aliens. I would be very excited if there, there were, but right. they definitely don't have... One of the things he claimed is that they have a ship the size of a football pitch. Right. Uh, it's rubbish. I mean, it's just rubbish. <clears throat> and also, bear in mind that his whole testimony is, a good friend of mine uh, told me... Like, that's it. It's all hearsay. Oh, right. Um, there's no. Proof. I thought he was There's like nothing. an official. No, no. You know, he worked at, for the government in a, in a lab. Right. And the he government was is clean. huge, isn't it? The government is absolutely fucking huge. And this is the thing. It's like the qualifications. The U.S. government we're talking yes, about. Yes, of the course, way. it's yeah. enormous. But yeah. the, it's like at any time someone is connected in any vague way with an institution, suddenly they're a reliable source. And this is a lot of the same people who think that the government is hiding things. Suddenly, yeah. this guy who works for the government, oh, he can be trusted because he worked for the government. It's like, all right, which side do you want? Like, now you trust him? You didn't, like, when he was working for the government and keeping his mouth shut, presumably? Couldn't be trusted. Now he's come out and said, oh, yeah, a uh, mate of mine saw all this stuff. Suddenly, he's a reliable source. I mean, it's like, it, it, just because you have that job, he, he just has a job. That doesn't yeah. make him a fucking reliable source. It, it's silly. People put so much faith in these guys, and they always like, oh, 
he worked for NASA. It's like, in what capacity? NASA's huge. Yeah. I, I want the director of NASA to come out and say, yeah, there's been aliens. I want, like, the guy who's the head of the NSA to come out and say, yes, we've been keeping these things. Not some guy to just say a mate of his told him that they have an alien. Gibberish. Absolute gibberish. When, uh, when do you think yeah. the right time to tell everybody is, though? Because, Immediately. I mean... Immediately. Immediately. I, right, I really, like I don't right, think right, right now is the excuse. time. Yeah. And, and if you actually have information. But why did they withhold it for so because long? Because there isn't anything. Right. <laughs> that's okay, that's it. You saw, I'm sure you've seen this week. This is obviously, we record this podcast a little bit in advance. Oppenheimer and Barbie came out, right? Yeah. And everyone's being owned and seeing them. And I saw Oppenheimer at the weekend. I saw Barbie. And did you see Barbie? I've seen Barbie. Right. It's a fantastic. Um, movie about the Manhattan okay, Project. Okay, well, I'm just going to hop in and say I've seen neither. Okay. Neither. Well, We've uh, got the full okay. gamut of opinions. But I did go see the Super Mario Brothers movie. Any good? For the second time. Well, it was <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you they, if you got this flex, but they do like this thing called Movies for Juniors. So mm. like, they'll bring back older movies huh. and it's like really it's discounted for kids. So it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like a... It's a yeah. scheme to in, it to you know entice children, entice to, the cinema, children yeah. to the cinema to get them you know acclimatized it, yeah. to cinema life and then I mean, so uh, they can watch something on a big screen instead of a small screen right yeah, yeah it, and, and they get the cinema experience and it is much much cheaper as well because the idea is that you're taking small kids who have no attention span right and if they get pissed off ten minutes in. It's only cost you two pounds to go, you know. Right, so you right, can just right. be like, "All right, whatever, let's go." I mean, you know, I, I've definitely you don't been to stay. those uh, those yeah. screenings where it's like, like I, I I can't remember what film it was. It was an it was an adult film, like I, it was whoa, a root film. It was a film. We're for talking like Tom Hanks, there. Philadelphia. <laughs> here, you're in like one of these CD. <laughs> no, it, this is like we we, we I can't remember. It was, I I I think me and Mrs F went, and we had both the kids were very little. Right. Um, and everyone in there just had babies. It was like a special screening. Right. Um, for where where the, the idea is you're gonna go in, it's gonna be loud with babies. People are gonna have to be leaving to change babies. Yeah, yeah. It, it, just deal with it. And because you're all in the same boat, you're all able to tune out baby noises. Yeah. Well, um, I find it it's 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 pretty chill because um, like you said, everybody's in the same boat. Right. It's it's cheap to go, so people are yeah. not like, oh, I can't have my experience ruined or whatever. And and the kids are just they range from about yeah, yeah. three years old up to like say eleven or twelve. Right. So some of them are just sitting there watching the movie, and then some of them are just running up and down the hallways yeah. or you know laughing or screaming or whatever. And it's just kind of like it's a different atmosphere, but it's not a terrible atmosphere either. It's actually yeah. pretty fun. It's 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 fine. It's but, like when you go to giraffe at the weekend and it's just full of people with little kids and it's just bedlam. You know, you you buy yeah. into it. You're yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, know yeah. it's going to yeah. be like this. I'm going to be contributing to this sure. racket. No problem. But the movie the movie theater was packed and i've been to a couple of movies over the years like maybe say the last four or five years and we're like the only people sitting in there you know like if you're going on a not cheap night or whatever nobody's there but mm. with this it was just ram packed like I, there was not a spare seat i haven't seen a movie theater like that since probably i was a teenager i, they, I mean to, I, be this fair, is I to see terminator yeah. 2 on opening night and right. it was like people were standing in the aisle yeah. there was no seats left sort of thing i said i mean but first of all bear, let's bear in mind you are in jersey which is not yeah. like a yeah a busy it place. is different it is a small place yeah because yeah. i mean when we go to this cinema here it's generally it's generally busy when we went yeah. to see barbie a couple of di nights ago uh we went for the 4 30 showing because we were gonna have dinner afterwards and we did yeah, that. yeah. we had a ni nice evening yeah. just me and the youngest it was packed and yeah. it wasn't the main theater it was like they were showing on multiple screens right and because i'm smart and i know the screen we booked the front row oh and you know the way Whoa. on the website it shows you the screen and the front row and they're like adjacent there's yeah. like 20 feet between the front row and the screen so it was it was a good time we were uh, fully stretched out I, I i long for the days where you did not have to book a seat number at the at the movie theater mm. you, you could just Has buy that ever been a thing you could just buy tickets and you go in and find a seat has I, that I, ever been a thing? What? No, I have, not booking I have a had seat? that a few times. It's I prefer the seat number. It does cause less friction. Uh, it does not. Every my in my experience, every time we book seat numbers, there's always somebody sitting in our spot. And then we and we're we're like, oh well, whatever. We'll just sit next to you because we're assuming that you just got 
the you know a couple of seats off or whatever so then we sit there and then we're in somebody else's seat and then it's a (laughs) chain reaction of people who are so fucking anal about the seat numbers that they've chosen and and having to have them except the first so by the time they and everyone else after was too polite so you'll have you'll have a a big group of like six people will come in just as the movie's starting everybody's sitting down and they're like oh you're in our seats and then fucking 30 people all have to shuffle around and find the right seat uh, while I the mean, movie's I, already started, like, this happens so people, often, though, it's insane. But, but yeah, I mean, uh, so when we go, we book a row, of, you know, four seats. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to have to turn up and just be like, "Well, it's just sit where sit where you can." Like, I want to have yeah. four seats. I, but I, so I, I for you guys, it's always, it been, it's, it's always been it's always been a sign. I can't seating. remember not booking a seat, like, oh, or, or at least when you buy the tickets, they give you a seat number. This is yeah. for me. This is all relatively new. Like, I've always it's always been. A free for all, <laughs> like in in North America, like or in Canada. I don't know. Maybe it was just a part of Canada I was from, or whatever. But it was never assigned seating. It was you bought tickets oh, and you went sure. in and you you I, hoped I that there were seats it. together or whatever. Maybe maybe when I was a kid, maybe it was like that. I don't remember. So this was a huge weekend for Hollywood, right? Because yeah. of the, both both big films coming out. It's this whole weird thing about Christopher Nolan being snubbed by Warner Brothers. Barbie trying to like sabotage his big release. Kind of this. But actually, it's ended up being this meme, a little bit like what happened with Mamma Mia and The Dark Knight 15 years ago. What happened with those? Well, they released on the same day as well and were both big hits. And that was the original Oppen Barbie or whatever the fuck it's called. Bob Barbenheimer. What well, was Bob it called Hume. back then? Dark, uh, dark, 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 dark Mia. Mamma Mia! It's a dark night. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can't see. <laughs> it's so dark. <laughs> and so it feels like like the the movie theaters have had this. I don't know. Some people are calling it like the last gasp of Hollywood. You know, before. Or at least traditional movie theaters, but it was something. There was something quite nice about sitting in there with everyone watching it. I quite enjoyed it. Like I quite enjoyed the experience. I know some people hate the experience of going to the movies. They hate the, the people running, the kids running rampant in the in the in the aisles, and the pe- the chatty people and the popcorny people and the the kids in there. But in my experience, it's always been quite nice. Um, and and, and Oppenheimer was. Was a big, big, epic, strange movie to watch. It's, it's, it's so loud, so weird, mm. so yeah. kind of you over pro- the top. I wouldn't have expected there to be kids running around the aisle for Oppenheimer, but I was talking to someone and they watched probably for Barbie, since it is a kids' toy and a movie based on a well, kids' toy. Well, it's not really though, is it? Because there's already been thirty Barbie movies based on the kids' toy. This is a very modern one by a modern director, oh, and right. it's very accomplished. It's and moving away original. from being about a kids' it's, toy. It's, it's a pro- it's not a straight to VHS Barbie movie, right? Do you know what I mean um, for six year old girls? It's 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 not really at all. Uh, but uh, anyway, both very good films by very good directors, and it's kind of like interesting. I was supposed to see both in the same day, right? But after Oppenheimer, I had such a terrible headache. From like the epicness of it, <laughs> right. all. and also oh, it's like, a little kind too of... epic for me. I need to go have a lie down. <laughs> it had like I don't know. It had like it. <laughs> it was a bit. I had to concentrate. I don't know why. Quite a lot. Partly because like there were so many characters, and I was like, is that supposed to be Feynman? Is that supposed to be like this guy? Do you know what I mean? Like I was, I was, I know quite a lot about this time period because it's quite an interesting part of history, and uh, I think that actually almost hurt me going in a little bit because. I was like, I wonder if they're going to do this bit. Um, and do you, do you know what I mean like constantly? It made you think. Was, it made you second guess yourself. I was approaching it with a more documentary mm. style, and it, and I wasn't. It was interesting what they chose to show and not show as well in the movie. You know, it doesn't necessarily like show real history. It's kind of just only picks the bits of that you that are going on with the scientists behind the scenes. Yeah, and the sort of anyway, a good movie. But the point I brought it up really actually was because they obviously had spies in it, right? They had multiple spies. There was a point in the when cinema. What were they? What the- were they trying to find out? <laughs> They're trying to get into the Who's fabric in the right of seat? our society. They're trying to take us down from the inside. That's what they're trying to do in the Manhattan Project. Oh. So where they were building the A bombs during the war, they were trying to keep it secret as possible. And they were like, but, but of course, despite all of their security precautions, multiple Soviet spies were just right in the room when everything was happening. You know, and so the Soviets knew everything that was going on, and. I guess what I'm trying to say is that that was there was a lot of effort to make that secret. It was very important. But even with all of that effort and energy and care, everyone knew about it, right? At least from other countries. And so whatever the US government have done to cover up aliens, the other the other countries know about it. You know, China knows about it, the Soviets, the, you know, people will have found out about it. 
It's just it's just inevitable, right? Right. That's that's and how do you cover this stuff up? A, 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 a ship the size of a football field, like good at good work. Like we can see like all of your the abandoned fighter jets. We can track like you know super yachts going around the world with satellites. It's like very hard to hide this stuff from not from necessarily from people of the country you live in, but from other other countries' spy networks mm. who are trying to find out everything you're doing and who have embedded spies at the highest level. Because everyone does, you kind of it's almost like expected, right? Like, um, you know, it's like so. I guess like I'm just I just don't believe that some random guy from the U.S. Air Force maybe retired coming out and there's a lot of memes on Reddit, especially at the moment, where it's like, ah, oh, we tell you about aliens and you don't listen, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, well, you're not really telling us anything about aliens here. You're just. Also, it's, it's just speculative like... Speculative nonsense, exactly. as usual. But it's also this whole... I don't know... Do you guys I, still I, think that the truth is out there, though? No. Right, okay. Yeah, You've the truth is out there. It's just truth. way more boring than you expect. It to be. Right, right. It always is. Yeah. It always is. I, I think that the annoying thing to me is that if anything does come out about aliens, they'll be like... Like Elon Musk, for example. I hate to draw attention to this cunt, but... <clears throat> on X.com. He's, he's, he's really, this week, we, it's been a big week for weird shit. It has. Yeah. Twitter so, be renamed to X, X which got it got it um, banned in Indonesia because that's like a pornographic thing. Right. right. It's also you know, a, a load a of other websites. Rename Twitter videos X videos. I mean, what the fuck is this plan? He's obsessed I mean, with the letter X. He's obsessed. Well, and he it, wants tweets he to, to be renamed to X's, X -Zeets, which is like I think is what he was going to call them. Zeets or something like that was another oh my thing. God. Um, it's actually insane. Like, he's taken this logo, which some guy just recommended, but it's not even an original logo. It's just the letter X from some font. Right. Um, he took the X, uh, X account away from someone. Um, they want to rename it X.com. You already had a brand. Everybody knew it. It was part of, like, you could say, tweet me. You know, yeah. tweet at me. What? It, it was a thing. X and now he's me. like, you're right, right now, X me. What the fuck does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It yeah. is, it's, it's ridiculous. But this is the weird thing is he is obsessed with psyops. It's like, oh, it's a psyop. It's a false flag. They, they honestly, there's a huge subsection of people that any news that comes out that essentially they don't like the sound of, it's a psyop. It's to distract you from what's really happening. Right. That, that, so his Twitter account now is him basically posting this kind of QAnon conspiracy nonsense. And because well, yeah, because he, because um, LeBron James's son, who's called Bronny or something, <laughs> not Bronny. Um, Man, imagine LeBronny. he named him James. <laughs> James James. Uh, oh, James James. James James. James James. Um, Follow me, James James. So, uh, so he he uh, very sadly collapsed on um, and had a sort of cardiac incident on on the field. Oh, right. Like, Sorry, I was, I was making fun of him and uh, right. didn't realize right. he's actually he's actually okay because it was in a very public place and they they got him immediately on like got his heart right. like, yeah. going again. So he hasn't apparently had any mental damage or anything, which is good. Um, but he um, Elon was like suggesting it was because he would be vaccinated. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, what the fuck is this now? I mean, like, he's he's it's, not it's, a very bright he's man. He's gone. He's like it's it's happened where he used to be the one everyone admired, right? And everyone was like shitting on Zuckerberg, and it's and you know, everyone thought Zuckerberg was like, oh, he's just he's just commander data out of Star Trek, right? <laughs> everyone, like this has done so much for Zuckerberg's like fucking. Well, in that like, in that uh, context, yeah, I mean? the yeah. Musk versus <laughs> Zuckerberg. Yes, yeah, somehow Zuckerberg has come up has, looking. He's been elev he looks great less weird in and insane. And also, Bill Gates is now less weird as well. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else so, is less weird so compared weird. to Elon. Like the weird thing um, is, I mean, he's always been. Bill an Gates guy. looks like he stinks to me, uh, like uh, <laughs> physically. No, he does though. I bet you he has questionable uh, like hygiene uh, routines and stuff. You know what I mean? I what you just mean? looks what like mean? he stinks a bit. <laughs> but like your grandpa. Yeah. What like you he mean? just looks like a bit greasy somehow or something. I don't he know. He just looks like a nerd. I mean. Well, that too. Yeah. But he looks like he smells like jizz. Like he's probably just fucking jacking <laughs> off all the damn time, you know? <laughs> Oh, but fuck so me. Anyway, he, looks like he smells like cum. Bill Gates smells like cum. You heard it here first. He's done. You, there you go. That's what the spies have uncovered. <laughs> Report back, Agent, Agent Sips. Uh, Bill Gates smells of cum. Hmm. How can we use this? Spy log. 53929. <laughs>
<laughs> Detected a strange smell around Bill Gates today. <laughs> it smells. I think I could identify it, but it's a bit weird. Commander. It smells like cum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, poor Bill. But he does look like he stinks of cum. So here's the other thing about Twitter, is that now, <laughs> if you have a verified account, which of course is not verified, you just subscribe, you're a subscriber, yeah, yeah. it filters your replies to the top of a thread. So if you reply to someone and you've got a verified account, they always seem to be the guys at the top. People with like eight followers, but all they do is respond to Elon Musk's tweet saying, oh my god, Yes, Mr. Musk. Uh huh. Uh, step on me. Like they just fucking love him so much. So it looks step like step on. Me. I I think he's put that in just so that when he tweets, all his fanboys respond, and that's all he sees. He doesn't see people calling him out and all the people saying no, this is false. All oh, he, he sees, just sees people yeah, agreeing he sees, with him. I tweet, and the next hundred tweets are all people going, "Yes, Mr. Musk, please take my money." Oh, he's such a genius. He he's all very clever. He's our guy. This is all a plan to bring down. Twitter. Who fucking cares about You are it? exactly right about this. He, we've, we saw this, though, when his uh, WhatsApp messages or whatever were leaked, because he didn't want to buy Twitter originally, no. and they took him to court, and yeah. then he had to buy it, and all of his texts were shown. And he has this like crew of sycophants who are constantly like, oh, Mr. Musk, you're so brilliant. You, you should do this when you take over Twitter, and you should make this better. Oh, you've got such good ideas. It it's, sounds it's- like my stream. Uh, <laughs> chat. That's what so it's the like. Exact every time I, look, I every time I look at the chat, this is the kind of shit that's going on. Which interesting. I this like. actually does segue yeah. into something I wanted to talk about this week because, and again, the the problem with this podcast going a, a little like a couple of weeks later is that it, it, it might be old news by then. But I doubt it because this is crazy. Have you seen that like weird TikTok living doll? Um, creepy yeah. NPC thing. No, what is the deal? What, did, what do I have it's, to look up to see? This? She's it's, basically just sort of. It, she acts like a robot that's stuck in a cycle. A sort of. Says, oh, it's a, it's a person acting like this. Yeah, and they sort of respond with these fixed phrases or something. It's very, very odd. Ice cream, so good. Pinky Doll is the original one who did it, and basically NPC streamers. Yeah. Pinky Doll, Cherry Crush. I mean, what it's the... just a sex thing, isn't it? Wow. Like quite clearly, that's all it is. So basically, they live stream on TikTok for like an hour, and they repeat like five or six phrases when people donate. So they stand there like an NPC, right. and then someone donates and says like five bucks for, to say hot dog, and they go, "Mmm, hot dog, so good." And they, that's one of the five phrases. The other ones are like, gang, gang. And um, uh, there's some other ones. Uh, gang, donuts, gang. yum. Um, so they each have their own like little sayings. I want to do this. I really want to do this. And I'll, my, well, my five phrases are, fuck off, shut up, you should be ashamed of yourself. Eat stop, shit. <laughs> fuck you. Eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck okay. right off. So fuck off. You should just just try it. Fuck just off. Instagram fuck off. Live stream. Fuck this off. is the keep Eat on shit. keep going. Fuck. I'm almost there. Eat shit. Fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. I'm you should there. be ashamed of yourself. Oh fuck my god. Off. I'm, I'm coming. I'm about to smell like Bill Gates. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I smell like Bill, Bill Gates. Gates. <laughs> I'm gonna suck. <laughs> so no, it is. It's a weird. Okay, now there is this, like, I've seen this before to some extent because, and I don't want to say this, look, okay, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> he's going to so, say it! He's going to so, say it! Here we go. So Japanese Oh, porn here he's getting racist, okay. Is, is still um, censored, right? Right. Well, so in what sense, things, what do they blur out? Cocks? The, the, the cocks and the pussies. The pu- they blow, wow. they, they blow, so they none blow, of us blow, blow out. Maybe, maybe that's out. part of the appeal, because you just can't really see what's... God, it's a mess down there. It's all blurred out. You don't have to see, like, you don't have to see it. And no danguses. You don't have yeah. to look at there's, another dude's dangus. There's loopholes, though. They don't blur really? out assholes. Oh, all uh, oh, right. They do blur out... No, they do. They don't. They do. <laughs> Oh, so they don't blur out. Uh, they don't blur out an asshole, but they will blur out a cock if it's going into the. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh yeah, because the, the cock is blurred out. <laughs> so um, I think it's anyway. Isn't it stuff Jesus shit Christ. with pubic hair is what they like. The, something Listen, do don't, the, 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 don't speculate. The point is that they have some <laughs> very <laughs> creative. <laughs> they have some very speculative. They, they have not factual. They, I'm, I'm telling you, just ask. They have a, they have very creative ways of making uh, porn stuff, right? Right. And one of them is like. Um, freezing time stuff or like i don't know like they they just they just do a lot of this slightly weird stuff and so this living doll thing is again it's similar to that in a way it's like this kind of it's like almost like um it's a bit it's a bit creepy and a bit rapey i've got to say mm. i'm not a fan because it feels a bit like 
and, and a little bit like um kind of without consent almost like you're freezing time like that kind of, do you know what I mean or like or like being invisible in a locker room it's all slightly creepy fantasy stuff right that is when you think about it not very cool but look who am i to say what gets people off you know there's, there's worse things right um furries so uh i just wanted to put that out there but so i th- i think like this this is a, th- a thing like it 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 is it for some people this really does like get them off i think because it's so and it is weird um we've we've, we've 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 lost variety sometimes is what you need no, right we've sometimes lost. we've lost humanity is we've, lost humanity we've is lost over. our way we don't know what we're doing we we are we are so how did we how did we get to stupid. this point we've yeah. lost yeah. This is it. I mean, what well, people are watching this. Donuts, yum. Donuts, yum. Nah, nah, nah. Donuts, yum. Like this, this is this is this is it. It's over. We give up. In a thousand years, Wait, if we're still here, we're gonna look back in class. What what were people doing in 2023? Well, we found a very old clip on the Wayback Machine, and here, look. Donuts, yum. And you're showing that to a class of kids, and they'll be going. Hopefully, what the fuck were we doing? Right. Or they'll be exactly. going donuts yum because that's what English is now. Is you just say donuts yum? Everybody's talking five be phrases like, at birth. This might be alien infiltration. No. They might be mind controlled by aliens. No, we to just, say we only just those. Suck. This is what the aliens want from us. They want to turn us into these NPCs. Well, mission fucking accomplished. We suck. What, are, what is going on? I, this is the this has really thrown me through I a loop give up. this week. I give Did up. you this watch the thing. gang gang one? I watched it. I give up the whole thing. I don't. All of it. I do not understand that this <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I get, it's it. I, I'm checking it's out. Actually, I don't care anymore. Quite, it, it is oddly entrancing. It is not. Um, it is. It is fully infuriating <laughs> to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how anybody can watch that. It's fascinating. It's not it's so in the slightest. Weird. It, it's it, it is infuriating. This is I've actually can't believe that. this is my limit. Like that I finally found it. But I can't think of anything stupider. And it's only gonna get thicker from here. That's it. I I I, I want the conflagration to come. Consume the earth. Get rid of us. We shut. <laughs> uh, it's over. all because of this. All because of NPC. There's a final straw. <laughs> NPC TikToks. I, I oh just give God. up. All the we got all the fucking thickest people in the world have all the money and all the power, and the rest of us. I thought they were stupid. I Elon Musk is a genius. I'm saying it right now because he's not doing this. Right. Yeah. This is this is the level now of idiocy. We keep setting that bar lower and lower. Every time you think you've seen some dumb shit, and I thought Elon Musk on Twitter was some dumb shit, that looks like a genius play compared to this. And there are thousands of people paying money to watch this shit and enjoying it. We're the idiots now. We all are. Ah, I give up. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, Lewis is watching. Lewis is entranced by it. He can't stop. He's like he's like Costanza in the bathroom, looking at the fucking painting that you have I'm hypnotized to hypnotize yeah by, like, he's gonna walk out yeah. he's not got his shirt on because he's been watching NPC gang gang t- gang gang, gang. I, I, ice cream so good the balloons. Pop, yum yum pop, pop, pop. ice creams <laughs> pop the balloons <laughs> is that one are you watching it or now turn watch. it off since. no, no I, I watched it, it just before just because I, I I only I, I skimmed through the article but I didn't watch any of the videos but now I'm you know filled what? with regret after watching this is a psyop to bring down the the, the no, modern no, our young no, people they're gonna go to war and they'll no, be like oh no one's clever enough to have come up ice with this so good no, no exactly sorry no, it's no not way. there's no deep state there's no plot we are just sinking into the mire of idiocy I gotta daily. say though for this 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 has really surprised me because I would never in a million years have thought that that would be a trend and it just makes you think what could possibly be next and it it's probably gonna be a thousand times more stupid than this. Yeah. So because it's a, it's, I don't it's a even, race to I the I can't bomb. even fathom how. It's, it's going to be so insane, Chris. You're not going to understand it. We're going to see it. We're going to be like, what, what? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Like, no, that's well, the that's next how level. I feel about this one. <laughs> I feel like t- t- TikTok is like breakneck speed, virality, insanity. Like, it, it, it evolves and changes so fucking fast, right? Like, f- I could just use this as an example because um, Tom Bates. In the office, Tom Bates, really great, really successful uh, animator. He's got this series, Nigel the Marmalade, and it, you you must have seen it because it's it's gone viral everywhere. But it's really good, and he obviously put it on TikTok first, but he also put it on Instagram Shorts and YouTube at the same time, right? And it went viral on TikTok almost immediately, and you know it's getting like millions of views, and it's 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 great. Um, you should check it out. 
But his, um, he was like saying to me the other day, I was thinking of just shutting down the Instagram and the YouTube because no one was watching it. But it took like two or three weeks. And then suddenly it started going viral on Instagram, like completely organically. And then another two or three weeks and it started going viral on YouTube. Like, like, I, it's like something he's doing is um, working because they do have different audiences, these platforms, right? So, so there is some overlap, but I doubt if you're watching it on TikTok, you're, you're going to watch it on, you know, YouTube or whatever, right? So, so I think what it shows is that some like these these platforms are meant to encourage this right they they um, that in, in a sense it's reassuring that it's working that stuff that is really good does go viral because i was always of the opinion that you could put out the some brilliant stuff and it, it not be seen by anyone mm-hmm. but i think these platforms are designed to try and really elevate brilliant stuff and in in the mean in the a lot of crap gets caught up in it don't get me wrong like oh my god a lot of like the weight bait stuff where it's like oh just wait one second and i'll show my boobs to you and then the video ends and they never do (laughs) (laughs) i wanna see titties that's what i get caught by um but do you know what i mean like it's actually like tiktok is this super like mega processor so we're gonna just go through cultural trends until we're like transcendent right hopefully we'll just get this all out of humanity's system or no. we just descend into yes. the abyss you know why That's the other way because here's the way i think i think the the way tiktok filters things uh and i'm pretty sure this is true of, of all of these algorithms is it knows how long you've watched for and the ship that immediately doesn't grab you and you swipe it goes all right that's we'll, we'll bump that down the order but animation and stuff, especially Tom's animations for the, the Nigel Marmalade stuff, uh, does very well because you watch it because it's animated and it's fast and people love animations and the drawings are good and the voices are funny and all the rest of it. So people watch longer. So it goes, ah, human eyeballs enjoy this. The people aren't making these decisions. This is some algorithm somewhere. Some server is out there at TikTok HQ sorting out what people like. And really, the computer knows what we want better than we do. So people are just making nonsense content, they're making good content, and the stuff that your eyeballs are attracted to gets bumped up. That's it. So sometimes you're watching in morbid fascination as someone goes, donuts, yum, donuts, yum. And you're like, what the fuck is happening? And it says, wow, human eyeballs like this and bumps it up. So as we expand the control that AI has over our lives, <clears throat> Even deciding what we like to watch is this is this is it. The computer knows what makes us stop and watch something better than we do. Like you said, well, I, think that I could might never be have come up with thing. this. No, it's a terrible might, thing. No, I think that might be good for it's good for for quality creators and okay. So the is quality. the donut yum stuff quality qu- content creation? Well, I don't know, but maybe maybe I'm too old for it. Maybe it's good for the next generation, you know? But if if that is where we're going, that is anti-content creation. Are There's people no watching right. it there. because they're into it though, or are they watching it because they're so shocked by how stupid it is? I don't I don't know if What's we that? live in a post-irony era where people watch these things genuinely, if they watch it ironically, or if it's so post-irony it's ironic to actually like it and yeah. then they actually do. I don't know. Like I've, I was talking about comedians, a lot of very popular young comedians. I don't get because I'm like, where's the like? I don't understand the line between your character, a joke, and whether you're making fun of me, the audience. Whether I, I don't understand where I'm meant to fit in the equation. And when I look at a lot of this content, I, I it's just so far over my head. I'm either so stupid and old that it doesn't make sense, or the <laughs> dynamic has changed for all this shit so much, it's just not for me. And if you're making content that's oh, it's just not for you, fair enough. But I just don't well, I, fucking I doubt get it. You, well, maybe you'll see Give this Give me one, an example. So. I, I, I guess that it, it's... Okay, I feel like the way this actually works is that, yes, stuff will fascinate you for a few seconds, but if they show it to you again, does it stick? You know, do you sit watching this for hours and hours? No, but if so, I'm you'll be shown 15. more of it, right? Yeah, but but if they are, what's wrong with them watching content they like? Um, do you know what? Do you know, know, like, if you were to look at my history of what I've been watching on YouTube, even just in the past month, and I'm sure it's the same for most months, I'd say that probably 90% of what I watch on YouTube, if I'm just, if I have time to kill and I'm just browsing around, is old concert footage captured on VHS in like the 80s and 90s. That's it, of bands that I like. Like I just watch old VHS recordings of bands before they were big. (laughs) Like they're playing to like 100 people or whatever. And they're playing the same songs and stuff and it's interesting enough, but that's all I watch. I don't watch anything else. 
I don't know. Does that? Am I fucking stupid well, no, and old or what? You know what? Like, like, I don't know. We, as much as we're talking about like all the bad stuff, there are some really good. Like, like I saw. Like, um, I watch a lot of science stuff, and like even like on TikTok and on Instagram Shorts, I get a lot of science stuff coming up. Like someone talking about a pulsar, or or you know some you know some some someone talking about something weird. And it's I, that's that quality content is still being seen by a lot of people. Yeah, and. And it's good, and if it's done in the right way, it can be super compelling. Like I love the rise of like all these maths YouTube channels and like interesting, you know, creative YouTube channels, like actually educating. I, I don't necessarily learn anything. I'm more like just, I, I'm, you know, I don't tend to go away from these maths channels thinking, oh, my maths have improved. Do you know what I mean? But it's interesting just to see, I guess, the passion of the, the creators and the, the 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 patterns of of how our world is built or the all these weird things in the universe like i i'm a i'm a big fan and and clearly i'm not the only one because no. these channels are <clears throat> I, w- I watch popular. a lot of those too i watch a lot of science videos and like things about space and things about mass all of that stuff i watch a lot of that but i'm wondering is that just my age group watching that stuff and maybe some younger people that are like you know studying that shit at university or Really like maths, but like I didn't expect chess to suddenly become hugely popular. Yeah, chess no. blew up. Yeah, so it's like it's impossible to predict what people are going to like. And I like, like you said, the good content, fantastic. But the algorithm is going to promote that exactly the same as this NPC shit. Like it does well, no, not differentiate. It-, it doesn't. There's no hand at the wheel saying I think it would be better. I mean, in the past when you watch television, tr- I suppose you're especially not kids' television, yeah, the idea was. We should make this appealing to kids, but in a way that parents aren't going to be like, what the fuck are you showing our kids? TikTok is like, we don't give a shit. There's no adult in charge. We'll get whatever some fucking maniac is watching. Your kids are going to see the same shit and they're going to see this stuff. And what is this? What does it mean to to a young brain to see people, adults doing this stuff and being successful? It means, oh, that's a way to be that is perfectly normal and reasonable. It's not. It's fucking bonkers. But it's not in a vacuum, though, right? Because TikTok, you see it for ten seconds and you move on to something else, right? There's there's a million things bombarding people now that they don't have to pick one role model. You know, they can. You could be a scientist. Say, mm, black holes, so good. You can do whatever <laughs> I don't you want. want to watch that either. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Maybe that'll be the right? next thing. Yeah, maybe you'll get uh, <laughs> Professor Brian Cox. Brian going to go all NPC. <laughs> on on mm. TikTok mm, about black holes. Oh, that's a long way. Mm, Gobi Desert. Ooh. <laughs> BBC license payoff please. <laughs> space so is good. really space is dead big. Space is dead big. Space black dead hole. big. Space is black dead hole. big. <laughs> uh, I'd watch it. That sounds uh, yeah. oddly Gobi entrancing. Desert. Yeah. Oh, that is I would fucking watch the shit out of that. And do you know what? With AI it won't be long before that can be just, you can type that in. You could be like, Brian Cox, living doll, you know, get your lube out, get yourself covered in cum, go over to Bill Gates' house. Get all musk. Online. Yeah, it fit right musk, in with the sm- in the smell. Yeah. Get all musk. Apartment. musk. Yeah. Stinking. Get all zucked. Get your, get your, get your zuck get out. Get sucked off get, big time. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> You're gonna oh, yeah. Bezos all over them titties. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing sexy about these billionaires, is there? No, just, nothing at all. They're just—it's pretty remarkable. They are just fucking huge nerds. Like they, they won, but they <sighs> are fucking nerds as well. What can you do, yeah. eh? Such, such, such is such is life. Such but is. All, I mean, I, I'm worried when the the top content creators are no longer human beings, which is definitely within a decade. That's where we're going to be. The top content creators will all be AI, just generating content day and night, just pumping just shit pumping out, pumping it out, and they will be able to hone their their you know content creation to a T to exactly what keeps human eyeballs on a thing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And human beings will not be able to compete unless we go absolutely insane and come up with stuff that even the AI is like, whoa, I did not see that coming. What but it, it, it just knows. What do you think the, uh, like the, the where, where do you think the, the sort of um, like counter to the mainstream of all this lies? You know, like music, music has had tons of examples of this, right? Where, you'll have like a, a a very established popular mainstream but then you'll have undercurrents that go against it right right, right. Like, like, i mean have, like, like when rap 
yeah, for example, yeah, ga- like, like, like gangster rap when it when it first started. When it first came out, it was like anti society, yeah. anti norms. Yeah. So it's weird because th- the so, some apps- of the some of the content like that we just talked about seems so um, contrary to to anything that I would right. I would almost place that in it, but it's almost but- giving it like a I don't know. I think, I Some think sort it, of... it, it doesn't feel like rebellious. It doesn't. No, it just feels like it, shit. It feels more like I'm going to be sucked in by the machine. Yeah. Like you're literally giving money to mega corporations by donating. They get a cut of that. Your eyeballs and all the adverts and everything. Like there's nothing rebellious about TikTok. No. No content creation you're making on there. The rules are very specific. Yeah, you, you know, and you, you follow these certain paths and you become a creator and you have to please the the algorithm and the AI and all this shit. There's nothing rebellious about it. I think the the idea of rebellion, even people protesting is being outlawed and like, oh, you know, shut up, still protesting. Like we're moving towards an era where we are protesting less and less and less in the West, I think. You're seen as a a, a complainer or what you're complaining about isn't true. Like it's 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 all very very controlled. And yeah. I do wonder when is the next youth rebellion going to happen, even just culturally, where there's something that corporations and advertisers won't touch and young people are all over it. What is that that's coming? I don't know. Yeah, it's a. I, I, I wonder if it's just been sucked out of kids. This sense of rebellion has just been sucked out. Bring on out the aliens. Well, this is what the aliens might be doing, though. They might be. Maybe this was their plan all along. For the invasion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so well, maybe sure. give, them that, give them the football pitch size ship for now, and then let's see what what we can do, and then maybe give them something else later or whatever. You know, maybe this is all part of the plan. They're trying to, they're trying to, uh, they're trying to knock us, uh, knock our mental states off. You know, like they're 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 working from the inside. They're they're, they're trying to trying to be like a like a, a rod in the in the gears you know no no i, I don't believe it I've just, i mean I'm, no? I'm literally tapped out i i think society is crashing and burning. <laughs> i think every Me, generation goes this. through this though because think, of this I think, right but what was you know, the you're, big, right, uh, you're literally right what? i think i think every there's, there's always, every generation always, that ages uh, yeah all right so let's talk about loses our generation. all faith what, what in, people worried in society about? and humanity well everything like you're gonna confront these things that blow your mind right every every I think at the forefront of every society since Rome, people were assuming that, oh, all those people with their eating Fuck, grapes. Fuck, I'd imagine that uh, there was a lot of uh, similar benches. sentiment uh, for the generation that fought the Great Wars as well. You're in the middle of World War II, for example. I bet you a lot of people just thought, fuck, we are doomed. Like, there's no coming back from any of this. That's, is that's a proper mess. existential doom, right? Like, well, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the threat of nuclear war and all the rest yeah. of it. I, th- I think my issue is I always got the impression that there was a generation coming that I, I, I may not have been into the same stuff that they were into, no no problem, but I still had faith. You know what I mean? I still felt like they were going to be countercultural, that they were going to come up with stuff that was outside the norms in a positive way. And I just think because the means of communication now is the internet and AI, that that has sucked kids in to such a degree that I think they've almost been brainwashed into just trying to use these huge, powerful platforms for some kind of counterculture. It is not possible. What, yeah, it's just not possible. There, there has to be some existence of it somewhere, though. And, and it doesn't need to even be... I think that I, I think even like on Twitch, for example, like we we all use Twitch, we, we're on Twitch or whatever. There's got to be some streamers. Uh, there's probably a ton of streamers if you think about it, who don't chase trends, aren't aren't in it for necessarily for views or maximizing viewers or right. you know doing all the things that you're you're kind of meant to be doing on Twitch or even YouTube for that matter. There's got to be people out there that do that, but the people who are out there doing it, do they? realize that they're doing it like what like who who can you think of as an example that does this kind of stuff that you could clump them together into like almost like a like some sort of scene or 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 something you know what i mean but even if it's interesting to think about even if they did succeed in that they're still doing it using a big platform yeah so that that's my point is that 
the the next sort of young person's rebellion in terms of culture, in terms of coming up with stuff that yeah. <clears throat> is way outside the norms. And people of my age and old will be like, oh, oh, this is this is going to shake things up. I'm a little bit worried. Yeah, yeah. They're not. They're all doing it on these platforms. I think I'm trying to equate it too much to the music industry, which is it, different because like you said, we're, right, we're, right. we're using a huge platform that right. tons of people are using. Whereas like in an industry like that, there was a chance at, at various points and still is, uh, I'm assuming, for uh, artists to, to go independent, right? Or even start yeah, up independent yeah. labels, like indie labels and, or, or whatever. But yeah. I, don't know if, I don't know if what we do can do that. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're, no. you're, still, you're still having to feed through this huge platform. Exactly. I mean, if you think about the, the way dance music like started, for example, it's, it's all very underground. Yes. And it's not relying on the record labels or a big platform like Spotify no, or yeah. YouTube or TikTok. These, tr the, the, like the, we deal now in just trends, yeah. but those aren't movements. There's not the same as a movement no, that is going to yeah. actually empower a group or, you know, they're going to, they're going to culturally, they're going to step up because now what they're doing has been picked up by young people. Now these, these trends are very, very small yeah, and they exist on TikTok for like a week and then they're gone. So it's almost like you're just allowing yourself to become a flash consumer of gibberish. And that that's not rebellious. I don't think that's going to change anything. That is just allowing you to sit there and just suckle on whatever the corporation's AI feeds you all day long. Yeah. And I know I'm sounding like a fucking deranged old lunatic, and I, I'm sure people will be disagreeing with me, but I just don't see where the next big thing is coming from outside of these platforms, because they've sucked up the entire means yeah, of communication. They, yeah, they've become the distribution point for... Right. Uh, like everything. Um. Okay, so how about this, right? So this week, I got sent this thing, which I sort of knew about, but didn't really. Right. Um, there's a bunch of places on the internet that are not run by these mega corporations, but have lots of a big, nest, quite a large community of people doing weird stuff, right? Right. <laughs> and one of them is fan fiction. Right. Oh, God. Okay. That's been around a now, very long time, though, fan fiction. Fan fiction is as old as time. Um. And I looked up my name. Um, oh no! Not, not the name of my Minecraft character. Not not Zephyr. Your full, which of course, given I just Christian Google name, just Chris, to see Christian how many name? there are on that. Um, but there, I mean, there are. Let's just see if I search for for my Minecraft character on this website. It, it brings up six hundred and thirty-seven stories. Wow! Uh, pornographic stories. All pornographic. Not all pornographic in different, well, at least adult stories. They don't have to be pornographic, but they're, they're weird. So, for example, well, if I Google my name, though, Lewis Brindley, original um, male character, uh, there's, well, there's 803 works under the tag Lewis Brindley. Um, and, and these stories are about me sometimes. Okay. Right. Like, actually, actually me as a person. Not like a, a fictionalized version of me, but me, even so. So right. I, I found one here, Lewis, that says Hooves and Mouths, MLP Yogscast crossover. So this is a Lewis Brindley and the Yogscast crossing over with My Little Pony fan fiction. Yeah, and not great. Uh, um, some my, very, little, very my Little odd Brindley. Ones. I store yeah. him in my basement <laughs> on a leash. Yeah. Oh god, I'm going to write some fan fiction. This is going to so, be fantastic. So, for example, like the one I got sent was uh, this one, which is called, which is I'm not going to do the link to it, but basically, it's a story about how me, Lewis Brindley, <laughs> wants to feel fulfill my lifelong dream of getting fucked by an alien until I forget my own name. <laughs> right, right. Like the experience okay. is so intense that you you will develop. A mild Am form amnesia. of amnesia yeah. throughout. Yeah. So, so basically, this is very specific. For a start, I I don't know entirely how I feel about this. Okay, first of all, <laughs> yeah. the person, what if, do you if mean? the person who, the first, I think the person who wrote this would be horrified that I've read it okay. or seen it anyway, because it's not. I guess it's not really intended for me to see. Right, I, right. I appreciate that it's a complex mix of like some sort of outlet for them, something silly, a celebration in some ways, something that's like just getting something out of their system. It's it's a combination of many things, right? And and I don't have to fully understand it, and I don't mind it, but I think I do mind it more when I I would mind it more if it was a situation where I was doing something with some like it was like because there's there's bound to be there's bound to be stories out there about the three of us having sex, 
Um, well, I, I would hope so. Point. We've been doing this podcast for long enough now. I yeah. think we're, I think we're doing some good news, don't you? It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's in a sense, it might be quite insightful. Um, so. Do you want me to read any of it, or would you like me to link it to you? You can. Read I don't it. want no, you to link it. I don't want yeah. you to link it to me. So if you feel like you have to read it, then go <clears> ahead. <throat> okay. Lewis stared up at the sign above the door, squinting a bit at the garish colours and neon lighting. There were six lines of symbols, only one of them English, with three of the others being letters he could recognise as a human language, and two being completely alien language. In English, it said, "Want a fucking alien? <laughs> Come on in." <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, what an opening! I wonder, how, <laughs> I wonder how they translated that pun. What? Lewis asked himself, since no one else was here. Pun? Uh, not that it's much of a pun, really. Oh, okay. He continued as he tried to pretend he wasn't the most excited he'd ever <laughs> been in his life. <laughs> Pretty basic bitch wordplay, honestly. He said. Uh, what, what is uh, going on? What is happening? What is the payoff for this? Writing this stuff. Like is it is it is it like a jacking off thing? It's like, just like it, erotica. Th yeah, it's just erotica. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've so, never written erotica before. That's why no, I'm asking. Neither, I, I don't know just, what like what it is. is it. What like what's a, what what is what what is involved? Like you're you're writing because you you like writing, but you're also pretty horny while you're writing. So I, I, I think but, sometimes and, I think it's, it's a fantasy. You just don't know where had. to put this the this yeah. horniness. Yeah, you can't make a movie. Right. You, you you don't know how to do animation, so you write your erotic story as text, as prose. I'm right. not saying I do it or it was something I would ever do, but well, I wasn't. I, I think it's uh, quite old fashioned you. and quite yeah. sweet in in a way. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah. this has been around. But... <laughs> well, yeah, and no. I mean, yeah. I'm um, not saying the content of this particular story, but that's right. what fan fiction is in general. Is it's fantasy. It, it's fan. Fan fiction, but it's basically it a fantasy. It's erotic fantasy. Exactly. And yeah, I think a lot of people do get off to it, actually. And maybe you should check it out. It might be your thing. <laughs> Again, you never know, right? Maybe it's variety as well. Like, I think actually a big part of this is, is something different. You know, I could just try getting off to this. Anyway, uh, do you want me to carry on? Yeah. So I talked to a secretary for a while, and they like point me in the right direction. And they're like, what are you looking for? And I say, Alien cop. I'm a bloke, Lewis said, and there's only a few things I want. Right. The rest can be totally random. What? Uh, but I want to get fucked. I want to get filled. <laughs> <laughs> and I know aliens don't have a human gender system, but I'd like as close to a man as possible, or at least someone who's fine with treating me as such. Uh, also, I want them to be vaguely humanoid. I don't mind if they've got extra bits like forearms or weird legs or something, but I'd really prefer being able to understand what I'm looking at. Oh, God. Uh, no incomprehensible blobs or living... Like weird loons. Do you know or some what shit. the crazy thing is? Is they've actually got your voice perfectly. Yes. <laughs> like this really sounds like you're in a. It's written. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's written for you to read it. You know, like it, it really it's is perfect. It's yeah. this is honestly exactly <laughs> so perfect. Oh my so, god! So so they give me a compatibility ejection to make me more malleable and adaptable. <laughs> oh right. That sounds uh, dodgy. Yeah, you'd you'd be able to fit a table inside you if you wanted to, <laughs> but it would take a while, and we don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> a table. Oh my god! A table. I know. Very interesting. Uh. So yeah. So blah 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 blah. So we we I go through. There's a long bit about me picking stuff and going through the basic packages. And the silver tier benefits and all this. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I finally meet an alien. Okay. Hello, right. I am I am Glub uh, Glubnub. I will be your who's... partner. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a humanoid alien. Very, with a, with very a table. specifically <laughs> a table for a penis. <laughs> with uh with the four alien's arms. Skin it's Goro. Was a deep dark blue with four arms connected to a torso. How did you fucking know there were four arms? Well, because I've read this one before. <laughs> and four pecs aside could be mistaken for human. Uh, he didn't have nipples, oh. although there were large, thicker scales there that had a passing resemblance. No belly button. His hips were a bit weird to accommodate extra legs, but only slightly. So he's got four legs as well. Um, four legs? They had been, okay, so... What, uh, six, what about his, six his, his penis? He's got a right. Yeah. Now, what let about me get his to penis? That. Let me get to that. So there's quite a lot of um, scrolling. Hello, Lewis. My name is Huslid, and I'm a Ribblevac. Mm. We call our home planet Asheda, which is located in the Perseus arm. We're pretty far from your neighbours, but I'd say we're neighbourly enough. <laughs> um, 
And so, yeah, I talk about his voice for a bit. Uh, it's, we, th then stuff starts going on. Um, Sexy stuff. Se well, we start, like, we start like touching each other. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and there's, it gets pretty explicit. But basically, he has two cocks. Okay. Right. Um, well, I mean, he's got four arms and four legs. You think double everything, right? So, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Which is very exciting to me. Uh, and then it just, it's, I, okay, so this is 18,000 words. Jesus Christ. I know. Jeez. <laughs> Do, have you read this the is, whole thing a couple of times over? Uh, I've skimmed it. Doing your research? But you, can, you can get a good vague idea of, this is longer than my master's thesis. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and that took me ages to write. Right. Um, this is a real labor of love. I think this, a lot of, of this yeah. stuff just writes itself, though. Yeah, I think. I'm going to say also it's probably a better read than your master's thesis. Yeah, that's oh my true, god. Yeah. yeah, like I wouldn't want to yeah subject anyone to my master's thesis, but this, um, yeah, I mean, I've I've not read to the end. It just it just goes on and on though. Like it's really we get on we get in. There's a lot of imaginative shit here. Yeah, mm. it gives you it gives me a lot of ideas. Honestly, <laughs> um, you know, do you, do you, okay? Do you ever like? What, what, we, we can talk about loads of things around this, but do, do you does this concern you? Like, are you do you think this is like a worry? No, because it's I, only a step between this and like having your having like AI art of your uh, naked I would, body. I, well, I mean, I, I mean wh whatever. But the the point at which that would concern me is if in the document uh, that you're reading. Uh, it had like my address and my phone number yeah. <laughs> and like pictures exactly. of my house and my the road right, I live right, on. I, I suppose that, think about it this way. Um, undoubtedly, there is someone out there, specifically the person who's written this, but maybe others as well, who have these kind of fantasies and may they might even concern you. Yeah. So I suppose the question you've got to ask is, if you're happy for people to have those thoughts because you can't control people's thoughts, what difference does it make if they write them down? Why does that affect you more that they've written it down? If they never told you that they had these thoughts, but they still existed, just because they've written them down, essentially materially nothing has changed for you as a person. Knowing that someone out there has these thoughts doesn't trouble you. But the moment they type them out or write them down, suddenly it's a problem. Why do, you, why do you feel differently about it written down than you would if you just knew that it existed in someone's mind? Right. Yeah. That's actually a really, really good point. Yeah. I, it, uh, for me personally, I, like the, the fiction side of it does not bother me. Like it's, it, if somebody's being weird towards me, which I got to say has never happened, you know, if somebody's like stalking me or something off the back of it, then yeah, that is fucking right. Mega because concerning. that is affecting your life. Yes, but M materially. But, but just somebody, somebody who's just you know writing writing something like a fan site or, or just having yeah. a laugh or whatever, like whatever, like you know what I mean. There's there's a good chance I'll never come across it, and then if I did, I would just you know I would just have a have a laugh or whatever. It's just it's just a bit of fun. I don't I don't mind at all, but. Um, I mean, it's just there's it's, there's, there's a line like with everything. Really. There's there's a line, right? There there's yeah. a, there's a line where it it borders into you know creepiness or right. you know inappropriate or whatever. But I think if it just 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 the fiction is on on its own in isolation is, is I have no problem with that at does, all. Does this does this like I don't, and let me know if this is too personal? Do, do you like engage in fantasy like situations or or role play type situations in real life? Do you know what I mean? Or, or would you be inspired to be? Or if someone asked, if if you, like your partner asked you to, would you? How I, I wouldn't you? be able to keep a straight face. I would not I'm either. A terrible yeah. actor. Yeah, and I would just be part of me would be wanting to make fun of it while it was happening because it's so ridiculous. Yeah, it just it's I, never I think something I've part been of it though. You don't have you don't have to. I, not, I, you're not. You're not. You're not being. You're not in fucking Oppenheim. No, no, no to, yeah. I, I personally acting. don't, but I, I'm happy if people enjoy doing that and have fun yeah, doing it, it and are safe and and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I think honestly, fair play. If yeah, you can yeah. Pull it off if that's what you want to do. I, I can't imagine Mrs. F is in bed and I turn up and I'm like. Oh, I've got a big package for you today, and she's like, "Oh, drop it right here, Mister Postman." How could you? Not, how could you not laugh? Or whatever yeah, the I would, I would, is, it's so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but I feel like you guys are doing that all the time, anyway. Like making little jokes and quips like it that. Is, with but it, anyway. is, it is, it is, it is jokes. Like, and they become like inside jokes, but they're not like. What you described to me is people seriously dressing up and playing a role, and and you know, it's like no, no, it's no. More serious, I, think, I think it can you know? be as things as simple as like you meet your wife somewhere, 
and you just you're like oh hey i, I you know you almost like um oh you mean you, when you, you pretend you don't know each other and yeah you yeah. like you frame it like it's a pickup or something oh, do you know right. what I mean? so you'd and, be like hey so wanna, then you have this like want to go on a date with me <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah like i don't know and you, it doesn't have to be much but i think it can be a funny I've like heard moment of people and you guys are, you guys are doing this shit all the time with any, every, all of us anyway because we're all quite improv kind of silly right. people yeah, yeah. Who, who just make stupid situations it doesn't have to be like too too deep no I, 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 think, I, I, uh, think... I think there's an episode of uh, modern family actually where they they do this thing on their anniversary where they go to a hotel and he uh, phil picks his wife up at the bar like she's just some some girl at the bar and he has to come and chat her up but the danger of it is that now that you're playing a character of someone who doesn't know you and you have to impress them and win them over, the, the problem is you might just <laughs> not, not be very likable. You're not impressive. <laughs> and you're not charming and you just come across as a dick. And oh, in character, they're man. like, geez, this guy's awful at chat up lines and hey, baby, you know, it's like awful. So no, it, it kind of kills the vibe. I think if they love you and you love them, then that's a part of it. You you can be silly with people like that and they don't care. Like, I think it's all in the background. Like, you're not you're not getting that sucked into the fantasy that you uh, care about it. It's almost like it's in the in the back of your mind. It's just it's just like it's like a, a wonder. I wonder what it would be like to, to do this or, or just it's playful. Right. Yeah. So I don't think you need to worry about doing it wrong um i think everyone knows i just think it would be too funny i do you, do you think it would be too you yeah. think you fuck it up yeah I, I, like, I didn't find like um, she'd like reject you and you'd be like, oh, <laughs> I feel like fair enough and then she's, she's like, like some other guy alone. So You're gross. some guy comes up it's like hey she said no, buddy. Leave the lady alone. You're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> man, you, right. you got to do the power play when you're role playing, not knowing each other, and then just start uh, chatting up and uh, potentially having sex with a stranger, like with yes. somebody oh else. My God. <laughs> Your wife is just sitting there, like, what the fuck? Yeah, you just <laughs> Who's go look at character her and, first. Yeah, oh, you just go man. and crack onto some other bird. That would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh my God, fuck's sake. that would be. It. See, that's taking it too far. Yeah, um, I wouldn't be taking it too I, far. <laughs> but no, I mean, that, like, I've heard of people doing this oh, kind of stuff before, God. and it sounds it, it sounds like it would be fun or whatever. But but personally, I'm just not I'm I'm not like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't do stuff like that. If no, I ever did anything silly. like that, I would be joking around about it and poking fun at it, sort of <laughs> right. thing. You know, like it wouldn't be. I, I wouldn't personally be taking it seriously or anything yeah. like that. Well, in that. a sense, that's your own thing that you've got, though, that dynamic that you have yeah. is to poke fun at other people's thing. Yeah. And that's in the same way that that is its own thing, yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. um, anyway, that's enough of this podcast, I think. What an today. episode. Thank we went all over the place. Man. I apologize we for giving everywhere. up on humanity. I really, I, I just, you know, this kind of stuff really, uh, it's just, oh. Uh, so we, well, need to do, don't don't, let, know, it, don't we, let it get to you, We solved a lot of man. problems all the same. And, um, the, the, the world is a confusing and strange place. The more you learn about it, the more you realize how much craziness goes on. I and just, it, can, it, can, it can culture shock you. I know. I think, honestly, it's give, you're getting a bit of uh, Paris syndrome, yeah. right? You know, you're getting a bit of expecting something to be a certain way, and you're, you're being upset when it's not like that. No, I'm just perpetually when it's not like disappointed. That. Yeah. And well, I, I, well, I think I'm just going to stop reading... Anything. It's a it's a weird and wild and wacky world, and it's what you make of it. And Bill Gates smells like cum, so <laughs> so good. All right, see you next time. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Love you.